Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Al Mackey Arena here in beautiful Farmington, Minnesota. We have Darren Glur. He's that guy standing out by the center ice face-off spot, working lines on the girls' high school game. Farmington versus uh, Rosemount, I believe. Roll tape. 1-1 one, one tie, start of the second period. And uh, who turned out the lights? Okay. Three-man system. I got the 2-1. Like I said, uh, Darren's doing lines. Is that far guy on the near uh, near boards here? Uh, Farmington is the team in the white. They're coming towards us. Rosemont is the team in the blue. This is definitely a game here. Well, let's talk about some of the franchise players. Okay, and I'm gonna use this opportunity to kind of go and talk about things that. Uh, I haven't really talked about four. We used to do this deal at uh, MHOA camp where we'd find the smallest guy, the smallest, most rug rat type, tough kid at the MHOA camp, this Minnesota Select 15 Festival. We'd find one of these players, you know, the kid who's like small, but just a go-getter. You know, the kid's like five foot four, but he's out there just working his hardest and working his butt off and and doing the best you can. Okay, let's go, 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 go. Okay, I had to, I had to juggle two cups of coffee, believe it or not, to videotape this because they gave me two cups at the concession stand. I think uh, pretty much every single arena I go to, I buy a cup of coffee. And so far, whoa! Watch out for that blue line there, D. So far, this is the first time they ever gave me two because they were almost out of the pot with the first one, and then they gave me a second one. So that was kind of cool. So I'm double fisting my coffee cups and videotape at the same time. My wife says I can't multitask. Anyway. Getting back to the franchise deal. We'd pick this rug rat and we'd label him the franchise. Okay? You watch, let's say he was on the Navy, Navy Blue team. You watch 16 Navy. Anytime he hits the ice, you keep an eye on him, you follow him everywhere. Okay, I'm talking to some guy right now about the fact that I am double fisting. Not too bad. Okay. Um, be a yeah. So we did this, and we kind of stopped doing it because it, the guys at MHOA camp weren't, weren't quite ready for it. The reason we want you to get you to recognize players when they're out there, recognize the first line, recognize the. Ham and eggers, or, or recognize the ones who are going to be stirring the pot. And uh, let's see if we can recognize some of these types of players in this game today. And we'll point it out every time they hit the ice. And these are mental things that you should be doing. When you're in those games where you're feeling like you're getting lulled to death, where you're sleeping, when you shouldn't be sleeping. All right, Darren, go, 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 go. Head on a swivel, watch players, watch benches, watch the time, watch the players, watch the watch for partners, watch face-off spot, let's watch the cadence. Everybody behind's okay. Let's get a little bit more knee bend on that face-off. Not on the ready stance itself, but on the face-off itself, 
Uh, when you're in the act of dropping the puck, guys, your butt should come down. Your knees should bend in that motion of dropping the puck. And the reason being is you're getting yourself that much closer to the ice and you're decreasing your margin of error and the, the length that that puck has to travel is much shorter that way so you're getting it down closer, flatter 100% of the time and then you're also getting down in a good staunch ready position that is something that very very few uh, officials do knee bend on the puck drops some guys stand stiff-legged and they don't have good mobi mobility and they're dropping the puck from a too high of a height the height difference between when the puck is released and hits the ice is too high and their margin of error goes up instead of decreasing so bending knees decreases the margin error. Okay, getting back to my franchise uh, talk. Um, I know this will be a good game for it because there are a few. Oh, we got a goal. Okay, that, that gal right there, what number 33. We're going to pay attention every time 33 blue hits the ice because she's pretty darn good. Alright, there are a few on Farmington are pretty darn good. And we got to pay attention when they hit the ice. And you start recognizing these differences. Okay, you recognize the franchise players. You recognize the ones who are going to go out there and raise heck. And you tune into that. So, like I said, if you're in a game where you're starting to lull yourself to sleep, do a couple things to keep yourself mentally sharp. Number one, recognize who's on uh, what lines and when they're coming. Now, youth games, that might be pretty basic because, you know, I work a fair number of B-level games, Bantam B, Peewee B, where they got 10, 12 skaters. Or, no, I mean... 10, 12, yeah, 10, 12 skaters, and they just go, all right, group one, you're out, group two, you're out, group one, you're out, so every other. But what you should notice when group one's out of this, uh, the three studs, you're going to pay attention a little better than you would uh, if the ham and eggers were out. The other thing you can do to keep yourself mentally sharp play the guessing game. How often can I correctly guess where the play is going to go? What is my percentage of getting that correct? So if I think, okay, right here it's going to get chipped up the boards. Farmington D is going to get it. Nope. Okay, she's just going to shoot it on net. Hey, watch there. Okay, she's going to ring the boards. Nope, I guessed that wrong. She's going to throw it up to that winger. Guess that right. She's going to throw it on net. Pretty close. Got a pass. Okay, backhand on net. Watch it chip up to the... Okay, I'm doing it right now as I'm watching. And these are things that you can do. You're a linesman in a girls game. And you might not be totally working your butt off and everything else. Because play is you know, not as up-tempo. And you're not being forced because of the system the 2-1 system to escape. So you start guessing. Alright, she's going to dump it in. Oh, guess that wrong. Okay, she's chipping it up. She's putting it in the zone. Okay, she's going to chip it out. Heads up here, got to watch out. She's going to reverse. Nope, she gave it through the D. Number 9, she looks pretty sharp. Well, I'm going to watch out for number 9. She's going to go wide here. Okay, Oh, got picked off. Uh, but I was ready for it because I knew where the puck was going to go. And I saw that there was potential for something to happen there. Okay, so I'm going to stop it here for the next face-off in part two. See ya.